This video is sponsored by Dollar Shave Club. So on this channel, I've covered guys with alcohol issues, drug abuse issues, talked about CTE, gambling problems, everything. But the thing about most of those guys is that they have a certain redeeming factor. It's hard to say anything good about a guy who's been involved with domestic abuse. And I kind of held off on doing this video for that very reason. But then I realized on this channel, I just tell the story. I present the information in a neutral manner and allow the audience to feel however the audience feels. With that being said, today we're talking about Greg Hardy, former NFL Pro Bowler and current MMA fighter. This dude's had a crazy journey and today we're about to dive into it. This is what happened to Greg Hardy. Chew the way. Yeah, well, I'm no quitter, cause I'ma go, I'ma go, I'ma go get Greg Hardy grew up in a trailer park in a low income area in Tennessee. His mom drove an old Toyota pickup that was so beat down, a lot of people wondered how it could even make the trip to get Greg to school every day. Greg was said to have worn run down clothes and even lived out of his locker at times. So from the very beginning, we can see this dude didn't necessarily come from a favorable situation. Now, Greg Hardy has always been a little off you can look at any picture of greg hardy and he's got this look in his eyes man this this kind of cold look like he's like looking through you here's what his high school football coach had to say when he was asked if he ever felt like greg would be a danger to other people we all felt like greg had a chance to make the league even in high school and we knew if he made it he would be okay but if he didn't make it yeah I would be concerned. In Greg's mind, he thinks as long as he's making sacks and creating turnovers, he can do whatever he wants during the week. So as we can see, that's the kind of mindset Greg had even back in high school. Greg will oftentimes not show up to practice and his coaches would have to go looking for him. One time, they found him asleep in the bathroom. Something like that reminds me of the Josh Gordon story and I suspect that drugs were a big part of Greg's life even when he was a kid. The coaches went through all the trouble for the same reason most coaches deal with players baggage. Greg was a phenomenal athlete. In track, he ran the 200 meter dash and threw shot put. In basketball, he made all state honorable mention. In football, he racked up 65 tackles and six sacks during his senior year in high school and he led the team to the high school state championship. Greg attended Ole Miss from 2006 to 2009. As a true freshman, he racked up 49 tackles, five for loss, four forced fumbles, and two fumble recoveries. The following year, he raised his game dramatically, 64 tackles, 18 for loss, and 10 sacks. Dude was so athletic that he not only lined up at wide receiver and caught three touchdown passes during his first two seasons with the Rebels, he also played on the basketball team his freshman year. Now he only averaged like six minutes a game and scored a total of 13 points in 15 contests, but if you average that out per 40 minutes played, it's not bad. Five points a game, five rebounds, and three steals. The only issue is Greg could barely focus on one sport much less two. In 2008, as a junior, Greg was suspended from the football team for missing meetings. He'd sometimes have to be benched for losing focus in the middle of the football game. During his junior and senior seasons, Greg dealt with some injuries that saw him become more of a pass rush specialist as his total sack numbers plummeted. This 100% hurt Greg Hardy's draft stock. In 2010, he was drafted in the sixth round by the Carolina Panthers. Soon after, the Panthers realized they had gotten a gym when in his very first professional game, the sixth round pick made a huge impact four tackles, a forced fumble, and a block punt for a safety. Greg never started one game as a rookie, but as a pass rush specialist, he finished the season with 30 tackles, three sacks, and two forced fumbles. Now, Greg improved during his second year, 50 tackles and four sacks, but it was his 2012 and 2013 campaigns that were the height of Greg's production. In 2012, he recorded 11 sacks, making him one of the best pass rushers in the league. When Greg was asked about how he would follow that season up, he said that in 2013, he would get 50 sacks. Now, he obviously didn't hit that ridiculous number, but him setting his sights so high did help to fuel him into having his best season as a pro. Greg recorded 15 sacks, made the Pro Bowl, 
and was named second team all pro. Those should have been the best years of Greg's life. But remember what Greg's coach said back in high school. He said as long as Greg was getting sacks in the game, he felt like he could do whatever he wanted during the week. Well, now he's on the highest level, getting more sacks than ever before. So you can imagine that the shenanigans during the week ramped up. In 2012, Greg was dating a chick. Now the chick's roommate was also interested in Greg. That roommate was none other than Nicole Holder. Eventually, Greg ruined that friendship, left the other roommate, got with Nicole, and things escalated quickly between the two. After only dating for a few months, Greg invited Nicole to come and live with him. And while things started out cool, they quickly began to spiral out of control. Nicole was a bartender, you know, hella flirty. Meanwhile, Greg is big, prideful, and full of testosterone. Very, very jealous is this what I'm trying to get to. Now, like we talked about, Greg could be kind of a cold, you know, just dead eye type of person, sometimes hard to get a read on. Now, according to the book, Way of the Superior Man by David Data, some women, especially immature ones, will get that emotion out of you no matter what it takes. So they'll attempt to piss you off. Nicole knew Greg was immature also and very jealous. She'd sometimes use that to kind of push his button. Depending on the dude you're dealing with, that could either be harmless or that could be a disaster. More on that later. As the verbal spouts escalated, Greg realized that this was no good for him. So after he made the Pro Bowl, he kicked Nicole out of the house saying that he needed to focus on football. But despite that, their toxic relationship continued. On May 14th, 2014, Greg invited Nicole and a friend of hers to come and hang out with a couple friends of his. And all things considered, the night was going pretty well. They was hanging out, they was drinking, they was chilling. They were at the house, safe environment. Everything seemed fine. Now, eventually, Greg actually gets up and leaves. This is according to Nicole's story. During that time, the people who are still there, a couple members of Greg's entourage, and Nicole, a couple of her friends, and a couple of chicks that the entourage had met, you know, they all mixing in the house, but Greg's gone. At this point, everybody's still there, still drinking. Nicole said, I think in court, that, you know, they did some cocaine. You know, th things was escalating. Then they decided, let's go out. They go out, they drink more. Eventually, Greg hits up Nicole. She goes, meets him at another spot. They go chill there a little bit, bar hop a little bit more. And again, this is a late night. There's a lot of alcohol involved. There's some drugs involved, but you know, it's nothing crazy here, right? But then something happened. A Nelly song came on. Now, <laughs> that might seem like the most random fact to include in this, but it's important. Apparently, Greg had canceled a trip that he and Nicole were supposed to take at some point around her birthday. Not 100% not sure why he had to cancel it. Either way, she was upset. And remember earlier when we said she liked to make Greg jealous? Well, it just so happened, Nelly comes into the bar that she works at. She leaves the bar with Nelly, goes to his hotel room, and then of course, Greg finds out. So, so this is a major point of contention. Like at this point that they're partying this night, they're kind of past this, but they're drinking, song comes on, it comes back up. They seem to kind of sweep it under the rug and get past it, right? But later on that night when they're alone in one of the rooms in Greg's house, it comes up again. Greg kind of flips out and starts to verbally assault Nicole. It's from that point that things kind of get crazy. I'm gonna give you guys both accounts. I'll give you Greg's account first, then I'll give you Nicole's account, let's go. As the fight escalates, Greg calls 911. He says, I have a weld on my face. She just hit me twice. She's trying to hit me with another shoe. I'm behind the bar, I'm not touching her. My manager's restraining her. She's still trying to get at me. She's fighting my manager right now. Phone kind of cuts out. 911 operator's like, all right, we'll have a unit out, you know, quick as they can. Greg's like, she's trying to come at me, bro. Don't let her do it, bro. I don't know what the dude on the phone is gonna do. He later testified that Nicole had jumped into the bathtub, then thrown herself on the couch, and then went crazy trying to attack him. Greg's lawyer said that Nicole must have caused the injuries to herself because if Greg, who's 290 pound linebacker, really wanted to hurt her, the damage would have been much worse. Here's Nicole's side. I tried to get up, he pushed me. Then I started fighting back, he threw me into the bathroom. I hit the back of the shower wall and fell into the bathtub where he pulled me out. She said that he dragged her out by her hair and picked her up again. 
Then he threw her into the futon, which had several weapons that she described as guns from the army or from like a video game. She landed on top of the rifles and then fell onto the floor. In her telling, he stood above her, strangled her with both his hands, and she later told the detective that she thought she was gonna die. She said his pupils were tiny. He looked crazy. Greg was arrested for assault and communicating threats to Nicole's life. He was found guilty and sentenced to 18 months probation, suspending a 60-day jail sentence. He later appealed that and Nicole didn't show up to the hearing. So because she didn't show up to the hearing, the charges had to be dropped. Some people to this day believe she was paid to not show up and you can believe whatever you want, but yeah, I, she was paid not to show up. This is a quintessential toxic relationship where two people just don't need to be together. Greg is one of these cats that can't control themselves or couldn't at the time. Super jealous got way too much emotion into this situation. Then you add alcohol, drugs, and just this crazy environment. He put himself in a position to do something stupid. Nicole was also immature. She'd constantly press Greg's buttons and try to get him to do something stupid. But regardless to that, it doesn't make it okay for Greg, the man in the situation, to physically assault a woman if you find yourself in this situation fellas remove yourself bro remove yourself before you do something stupid because when you do something like this you can't get away from this no matter what even if it don't get out you still gotta look in the mirror every day you feel me it's gonna eat at you greg was placed on the exempt list by the nfl on september 17 2014 and a guy who was seeking a long-term contract before all the controversy would never suit up for the panthers again but we all know how the nfl works or anything performance based if you can perform well in most cases you're gonna find yourself with another job. Now, if Greg had been a guy who could not produce on the field, his NFL career would have likely been over. But because he was coming off a 15 sack Pro Bowl season, March 2015, the Dallas Cowboys signed him. The month after that, Greg was suspended for 10 games, but he appealed that and got his suspension reduced to four games. And hey man, Greg kept winning. Cause in November of that same year, 2015, he had those domestic violence charges completely expunged from his record. Like it's not even there. As far as the courts are concerned, it never happened. Obviously the court of public opinion is a lot different, but it was expunged. What's crazy is literally the day after, the day after it was expunged from his record, these pictures leave, but it was too late. Now, Greg came to the Cowboys with a media storm. This obviously created a very bright spotlight. Finally, Greg could get back to football, but he just never was there mentally during his time in Dallas. According to reports, he slept through meetings and showed very little interest during practice. He got into it with Dez Bryant on the sideline over his lack of effort in a game, and Greg has admitted that his high school coach read him like a book because now that he was a part of the Dallas Cowboys, he felt like he could do whatever he wanted to do. So he partied, he drank, he, he got high, he did all of that. Despite that, he still recorded six sacks during his time with the Dallas Cowboys. But that was not enough production to deal with everything else that he brought. So after the 2015 season, the Cowboys released him and Greg Hardy's NFL career ended. Without football, Greg fell even heavier into drugs, and the next year, he got arrested for possession of cocaine. At that point, it seemed like the productive part of Greg Hardy's life was pretty much over. But a few months after that, he discovered a second career. Now again, we're talking about a guy who ran track in high school, played basketball and football in college, unbelievable athlete. In 2016, Greg began training in mixed martial arts. And shortly after that, he began an amateur mixed martial arts career. In his very first fight, he knocked the dude out in 32 seconds. Now the dude he knocked out was Austin Lane, who is also a former NFL DN not just some bum off the street. I mean, that's an even playing field. He won his second fight by TKO in the first round. Then he won his third fight, dropped that dude in 53 seconds. Dana White over at the UFC took notice. Greg Hardy was already a big name and had been amazing in his amateur fights. So he signed him to the UFC. Greg actually made his UFC debut on January 19th of this year just recently and he knocked that dude out too the only problem was he did it with an illegal knee to the head 
So technically, yeah, he lost the fight. I'm not sure what's next for Greg Hardy. This is a guy who obviously has a ton of talent, but that domestic violence incident will never fully just leave. There were even some people protesting that he shouldn't have been able to fight on that UFC card because one of the female fighters in the past was a victim to domestic abuse and they just thought it was, you know, like they fighting on the same card. Some people was uncomfortable with that. But I'm curious to know what y'all think here. That incident was in 2014. Greg Hardy has since then moved on. It is possible for people to grow and it is possible for people to change. Has that been the case with Greg Hardy? Only time will tell. Let me know what you think in the comment section. I hope y'all enjoyed this video. And until next time, my name is Flimlo Raps. One. Yeah, I'm not no quitter, cause I'ma go, I'ma go, I'ma go get her. We all have our daily grooming routine. You know, you shower, you brush your teeth, and of course, you gotta shave. For me personally, I'm big on taking care of my hair and taking care of my skin, especially my face. I mean, making sure that's straight is just a part of my routine. Now, regardless to what your routine is, Dollar Shave Club got you covered. Dollar Shave Club has everything to help you look, feel, and smell your best. Now, a lot of y'all probably heard of Dollar Shave Club and because of the name, you feel like, yo, they probably just stick to mostly shaving products. But see, that's where you slept because Dollar Shave Club can solve all your grooming problems in one box. Shower product, oral care product, hair products, skin products, butt wipes, and obviously shaving products. Like basically if you have a body, they can help you. Dopest part, you ain't gotta leave a crib, they ship it right to the house and the more you buy, the more you save, they call it their handsome discount. So now is the time to see how amazing and high quality the products are. Right now they got this fire deal where you can get the shave, shower, or oral set each for only five bucks. Now they sent me all three of the starter sets Check it out. The shave starter set comes with the executive razor and a three ounce tube of their Dr. Carver shave butter. The oral care starter set comes with the weighty toothbrush and a trial size version of their toothpaste. Yeah, they got toothpaste. The shower starter set comes with three trial size versions of the amber lavender body cleanser, the citrus and Hawaiian ginger face cleaner, and the sage and black pepper shampoo. Now I'm more of a shower starter set guy. I rock with the body cleanser and especially the citrus and Hawaiian ginger face cleanser. The wife approves. Join the club with one of the starter sets for just $5. After that, the restock box ships the regular size products at the regular price. Click the link in the description to get this exclusive deal at Dollar Shave Club slash Flimlo today.